Yes, I am finally holding it. This is the Google Pixel 4. I've been ridiculously excited about this phone. Google, thank you for setting it out for me. I am a Pixel 3a owner and over time I've made lots of videos about the Pixel 3. So today's the ultimate guide for the Pixel 4. Lots of tips, lots of tricks, new stuff. Things like gestures, motions, live captions, transcription. All of that is coming up in the ultimate guide today. So if you want to know the settings that I changed, don't worry, I got you. Let me show you what you need to know. And welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Tech Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadget apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. Alrighty, let's start by customizing our Google Pixel 4. Long hold anywhere on the desktop and choose styles and wallpapers. Here you'll be able to see a whole bunch of pre-installed wallpapers. Now what I want you to do is look at the bottom where it says styles. Now under styles you're able to customize with a whole bunch of preset settings. So it's cool to kind of scroll through them. But you can also create your own. So you can choose the font type. Next. Choose the icon. Choose what they look like. Next. Choose the color. Cool. Click next. And then you can even choose what the icon shape is going to be. So let's just customize that. Click on install, save, and now you're going to give it a name. I don't know. I'm going to call mine very originally mine. And then click on apply. And it takes a second. And there we go. Now this uses my style in the background and on the icons and the fonts. Now here is a bit of a, an anomaly. Go back into styles. How do you delete a style that you've customized? What do you do? How do you get rid of it? How do you just get rid of it all together? If you do know, let me know in the comments below. We will all really appreciate it. Let's look again at the live wallpaper. Now, this is what it looks like. So you can see as I'm moving the phone around, basically the wallpaper kind of does a little bit of a movement. They call it come alive. So go into long hold on the desktop, styles and wallpapers, and is the come alive section. Any of these will actually do it. Now, I want to show you this. When you install this Pokemon one, after a bit of back and forth and some questions answered, okay, you, this is going to take advantage of the Pixels for gestures. So, wave your hand at Pikachu, and it waves back. Right, what else can we do? Reach out and pet, and I can give him a lovely pet on the head. Cool. Double tap, and essentially it will switch a Pokemon out to something else. Like that. Now, once you apply this wallpaper, there it is, and the gestures still work. So let's wave, it waves back. There we go. Okay, so I'm taking advantage of the gestures for a little bit of fun. Okay, whilst we're still speaking about display, let's go into settings, go into display, and dark theme is still here. Yes, we did have that on the Pixel 3 as well. Now let's enable that. Very exciting to get menus in dark theme. Now, even all of the other applications now get the dark theme when you apply this. So here is the Play Store. Let's go check out Instagram, whether that does it. Yep, and even Instagram gets dark mode. Everybody's ridiculously excited about it. Uh, frankly, I don't get what the big deal is. But hey, it's here if you want to use it. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the display. Go into settings, go into display, scroll down until you see advanced. And what we're looking for is something called ambient EQ. And you want to make sure that's enabled. That is dynamically adjust the display based on the surrounding light level. Okay. Now, speaking of cool displays, go into the smooth display. And essentially, it's going to raise the refresh rate from 60 to 90 hertz. So you can take advantage of that beautiful Pixel 4 screen. But it will use up more of your battery. Right. Next up, we want to look at the screensaver. It's typically a clock. When do you want it to start? There's a bunch of options while charging, while docked, while charging or docked, or never. So choose the one that suits you best. Little gear icon next to it. Here it's got night mode. Very dim display for dark rooms. This is cool if you want to have your alarm clock, things of that nature. Okay, so what else are we going to do? Let's go back. And this time we're going to look at display size. Now this you can set to small, medium, large, largest, etc but it also will change the icons as well as the quick setting menu. So everything changes, not just the fonts. So if you're having a problem with your eyes, go and play with this. Scroll further down and then you're gonna see lock screen display. Let's tap on that, just zoom in quickly. 
Right, lock screen display, tap on that. And on your lock screen, this is when you're gonna get a lot of information. What kind of information do you wanna have on your lock screen? All notification, notifications without sensitive information, you choose what you want, what you're able to see. And skip lock screen. Basically, if you unlock your phone with your face, it's gonna go back to the screen that you've just left. Next up, lock screen message. In case you wanna leave a cool message on your screen, that's up to you. Scroll down. And now you're gonna look into something called show lockdown option. Let me show you what that means. Okay, here's my phone, it's currently locked. If I long press the power button, you see I've only got those three options, right? And then the emergency at the bottom. Okay, which basically means I can unlock the phone just by looking at it with my face. If I enable show locked option, now if I lock my screen, long hold that. Now you see I've got a fourth option, a little clock here that says lockdown. Tap on that, and essentially it disables the facial recognition I have to put in my pin in order to unlock the phone. Next option is the now playing. I actually have this enabled by default. It shows me the songs that are currently playing in the background on the lock screen. Ever had your kids put something on and then you go, oh, that's so-and-so sung by so-and-so. This always wows them, instantly earning amazing dad points for being so hip, lit, cool, rad, epic. I'm not sure what they say these days. Okay, let's move on. One of the cool things about the Pixel phone is the always on display. So lock screen display, click on always on, and then enable that if you want to have that feature. But this is something new because of the gestures. What you can do is disable the always on, and now you've got a bunch of new options. You can only switch on the always on display when you reach to check the phone. So using that gesture mode. The next one is tap to check the phone. And only then will it show you the always on screen. And then the final one is when you lift the phone, then it will show you the clock and notification on the always on screen. I just disabled the lift to check the phone because if I'm touching the phone, I might as well lock it with my face. And then the tap to check the phone, I disabled that as well. The one I want to leave on is the one when I reach for the phone. So the phone is now locked. Let me reach for the phone. And there's my always on display with one Instagram notification. Since we're just talking about motions and gestures, let me show you where you can customize that. Under system, there's something called motion sense. Now you can switch the whole thing off. So none of this will actually apply. Or you can enable that and use your motions to skip songs. There we go. Next, left and right. If you want to enable that, you can. The next one you can choose to do is to silence interruptions. This is going to be a phone call or an alarm. And this one actually is pretty useful. So let's set an alarm and then I'm going to show you how we use that. So swipe up, let's go to clock. Let's add a new alarm, bottom, right from one minute from now. Don't worry, I won't make you wait that one minute. Okay, so that's cool. Let's switch the phone off and see what happens. All right, so it's 9.39 at the moment. There's my alarm going off. Wake up and you can go wave at your phone and it just snoozes it for 10 additional minutes. Right, let's go into the system and let's go into gestures, which is the one at the top. Tap on that. The top you've got skip song, silent interruptions, but now we want to look at the active edge. Now, when you squeeze the phone, it can do three things. I normally switch off silencing, I switch off the screen, and then the only one I leave is the Google Assistant. Next one, jump to camera. If you double tap the power button, it will launch the camera. Now note in some countries like India, double tapping the power button will not do that because that's the way they used to call the emergency services. So that's probably gonna be disabled in your country. Okay, let's go back. There we go. And now we're gonna go down and we're gonna click on flip camera. Now this, I have never once gotten this right. This is when you open the camera and you do some sort of weird shaking action or something. What it's supposed to do is flip the camera to your front facing camera. I have never ever managed to get this right, no matter which angle I tried. I don't know, I'm just immune to it, I suppose. All right, so I just switched that off because, well, that doesn't work for me anyway. Okay, let's talk about system navigation. This is the way you get around your Android 10. There's a gesture navigation. It's a little button at the bottom. There's only one and there aren't those three back home and they've recently used applications all about the swiping motion swipe up goes to the home screen swipe up again the app draw let's go to an article on my blog techyguy.com shameless plug there there it is there's a beautiful written article read that and if you swipe back it takes you one step back let's go back into it 
Now, if you swipe back, it will take you one step back, either from the left or from the right, they both go back, not one forward and then one back. Long hold, lift it up, and then here's gonna be your recently used applications. And then of course, you can just simply do that little swipey thing to get rid of one of the systems. Little gear icon is just all about the sensitivity of this. Um, I just leave it by default because frankly, well, otherwise it messes with a lot of the other apps as well. And then if you really want to, you can always go back to your three button navigation, but from what I can see, you cannot actually customize it. I just leave it on the new gestures that are actually pretty awesome. Alrighty, one more thing here whilst we talk about gestures is something called prevent ringing. Now, if you hold the power button and the volume up button, if you squeeze them both together, it's going to put the calls and notifications on either vibrate or mute, whatever you decided. All right, let's squeeze them. And then this is a little message at the bottom of the screen that actually tells you that the call and notifications have been moved to either vibrate or mute. Great little feature, only problem is I keep forgetting to use it. So, well, it's here for those of you who can actually remember how to use it. Okay, let's go into settings and this time we're gonna choose security. Now here you'll see on the Google Pixel 4 that they've got the security update and the Google system update separated. So now you can check for system update from a security point of view and then any Google Play updates, so you can do that separately. So sometimes they will release security before the updates are done. So you can actually manually push those. Now the face unlock, that's very easy to set up. Let me just follow this prompt. But once you're in there, you've got a couple of options. Unlocks your phone, allows you to sign to certain apps, think of your banking, things of that nature. And then you've got an option at the bottom there called delete facial data. In case something goes wrong, you wanna redo it, simply delete the facial data. However, please read the fine print. There's a little thing at the bottom here, which basically tells you under what condition face will unlock, will actually work. And one of the things that caught my eye is that your face can actually work even if your eyes are closed. Technically, if you're sleeping, somebody could actually use this to unlock your phone. Huh. Okay, well, it is what it is. So use it as you will. Next option, advanced, click at the bottom. Now this is one of those hidden features. I never understand why this is down here but screen pinning, that's the one you wanna enable. So it's right at the bottom. To use the screen pinning, make sure the screen pinning is turned on, open the overview, and then tap the icon. Okay, let me show you what that means. So we're gonna switch it on, follow the instructions. Let's fire up one of the apps. So swipe down from the bottom, and there is my home screen. Let's fire up Instagram, let's see. Oh, look, there's Jacqueline. Go subscribe to our channel, really cool tech channel. Link will be in the description below. Long press on the icon, and then click on pin. Now, the app is basically locked to the phone. This is great if you've got kids or if you've got your friends over and you don't want them pranking with your phone. This is a great way to simply lock it to one application. So swiping up does nothing. Swiping down from notification does nothing. Basically, this is it. Until you enter your pin one more time, this is the only thing that the phone can actually do. Next up is live caption, probably one of the most anticipated feature on the Pixel 4. I've been ridiculously excited about this. So under settings, under sound is something called live caption. Now read the little splurb, but essentially what it does is that it will transcribe any audio onto your screen. So let me show you how this actually works in reality. It's really, really cool. Okay, let's go into something that typically doesn't have caption. There is TikTok, for example. Let's go into this, making sure that live caption is off. All right, there's our friend, um, Mr. Gary V. He's doing his thing, no captions. Switch the caption on, go back into TikTok and watch. There we go. It just transcribes everything that Gary is saying, even with the sounds off. This is pretty cool. The nice thing is there's even an option that if you don't want any of the swear word, the cuss words, it will actually put little asterisks. So Gary is a good one to test with. By the way, if you're on TikTok, come and follow me. This is at the techie guy. Another shameless plug, Woohoo! All right, let's get out of there. Let's try it with something else. So what else can we try the live caption with? Well, Pandora is here. I like to listen to a uh, comedy. So let's go into one of them and there it is. This is now transcribing whatever Jim Gaffigan is saying. Beautiful. And it's actually pretty, pretty good and pretty accurate. Let's try out YouTube and of course that works as well. Any of the other medias will work as well and you can move it around. So you can move the captioning up and down and you can drag it down to dismiss it, which you can do. What I cannot work out is how to get the caption back without stopping and starting the video again. 
So if you know how to do that, let me know in the comments. We'll be really appreciated. Okay, now that we're done with live capturing, I wanna show you that you can actually customize your live capturing, the size and the color, but of course it's hidden under accessibility. Then you go down to where it says caption preferences. Why it's under accessibility, I have absolutely no idea. Why should this not be linked directly to where it says live captioning? It just makes complete sense. Well, there it is. You can make the text big, small, medium, large, etc. And uh, you can have various languages, but it will only caption currently into English, although it's pretty much set up to capture into other languages when they become available. Another cool thing is the new recorder. This is superb. If you're doing interviews, if you're doing things of that nature, let me show you. I'm going to record something. This is a test to see what this would sound like. And this is a test to see if it automatically transcribes everything I'm saying and how good it is, even though I have a South African accent kind of muddled up with a British accent all mixed together in one. Seems to do a pretty good job. <laughs> I mean, how cool is this? Once you have the file and it's done, you can save it, click on the file itself, you can play it back on your phone, you can read it back, but you can also share it. And when you share it, you can share just the audio file, just the text file, or both. This is gonna save people so much time. So what do you wanna know about the Google Pixel 4? Do you wanna know about the camera or perhaps a camera comparison between the three and the four? Let me know, there's a poll up here or you can leave your comments below. And if you wanna see more Pixel 3 videos, check out some of these cool videos over here. Hit the head below to subscribe if this is your first time or give the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and I'll see you in those videos.